Ah, uh, yeah. Very exciting. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're there. <laughs> I hope they're there. So we, we're having uh, chicken soup. Chicken soup. Homemade chicken soup, okay. lovingly prepared by the lovely and talented Laura Wong Rose. <laughs> and uh, it's, well, it's, it's one of our usual things. We have the pressure cooker, mm. throw in a tiny chicken, and uh, yeah, it's pretty quick and easy. Take what, It takes an hour, but it's easy to do. Yeah, and there's usually enough leftovers for uh, a couple of meals and or lunches for mm -hmm. the next few days. So. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites with the spaghetti squash added in there. Mm. Yeah, it's great. So, today. Oh, man, today. We got a lot done today. Well, we went down... We went down... Um, first off, the sun... <laughs> the sun doesn't come up until, like, 9 o'clock now. <laughs> <laughs> no, nine. It was nine oh seven or something like that. Actual sunrise. So we went down to the boat about ten thirty, give it a chance to warm up, but it was, everything was still covered with. Oh, frost. There was still frost in in certain areas where the sun mm -hmm. had not been shining through the through the boats. Yeah, and the docks were slick and stuff like that. But it, you know, it it warmed up. At least it felt warm. And. Uh, well, warmer than yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we got to work and we got the mast up. And then um, after we got the mast up and got everything tidied up, uh, went up to the uh, marina office. Or, it's not a marina. I mean, you shouldn't even call it. shouldn't refer to this as a <laughs> marina at all. Yeah. Up to the harbor office, and they have pressure washers up there you can rent. So we got a pressure washer from the office and pressure washed all that green scum off the boat and some of the paint. How's it going, Chuck? Just finishing up. <laughs> we got the mask back up today. Woohoo! Ah, where have you been? You should have come a little sooner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got the mask back up. We didn't get it up yesterday because. By the time we got all prepped, the wind had picked up and we didn't want to risk it. And it was really cold. And it was really cold. <laughs> it's getting cold now. But, I think uh, we only I have this a couple is, of hours a day. Yeah, but this is the last probably warmish sunny day we're going to have for a while. Well, it's not exactly warm. It's it's not 40, yeah. not degree, not 40 degrees yet. It's 130 and the sun's already on its way down. Yep. So, so uh, job today is, of course, <laughs> getting the mast up, which is accomplished. Yeah. We got the mast up. Now we're gonna. Now we're gonna power we're gonna wash. Pr pressure wash this thing. Get all the scum off. Yay! So we can get a fresh layer of scum on it <laughs> for spring. <laughs> <you> see. <laughs> all right. I'll leave you to it. All right. Get this thing started. Doopy -doo -doo. Actually, you probably wouldn't recognize the boat. It's going to be funny to see our... I wish I had seen our neighbor's expression when he came back. Yeah. When he left and it was just this derelict boat oh, all gosh. covered in mold yeah. and mass down and all of a sudden, bing, it's all bright and shiny white and the mast is up. Yep. Well, I'm happy with it anyway. I'm really happy. <clears throat> and then tomorrow you're going to go put the Dodger back on. Yep. And figure out how to uh, do something with the tarp so that we don't get Yeah, I got the tarp over the, the uh, well, I just put one over the boom. That goes quite a ways, you know, far enough forward. You might have to drop a curtain down in, in, in front of the, the forward part, just behind the mast, to keep some snow out. The after part, you know, from the boom back, I'm going to have to be creative. I have no we idea. We mentioned we got this done just in time. It's supposed to snow tomorrow. It's supposed to snow tomorrow. Well, quite an improvement. Yeah, 
Yes, we need to pay some attention to our bright work. And we fully intend to completely repaint the exterior of the boat. Well, I couldn't reach all the way down to the water line with the pressure washer, but I did get almost all of that stuff off. And now we've got the, the, the after end of the boat uh, covered with tarps to protect it from the winter. And we also have the dodger on, which gets it out of the storage locker and much less likely to be damaged. <laughs> we had to get this done before the, before the first snow because if you don't get it done before the first snow, you won't get it done until after the last snow. And the last snow might not be until May or even June for crying out loud. It's not going to be that long. It better not be that long. One hopes. One hopes. <laughs> hmm. So thank you to Ron and Heath mm -hmm. for giving us a hand with the boat. Yep. The mouse tub. That was it's always nice to have a couple of extra yep. pairs of hands. Yep, yep. Ron and Kristen or uh, Ron and Kirsten, excuse me, Ron and Kirsten came in from um, uh, Seattle. They're members of the Puget Sound Cruising Club. <laughs> Hi guys. Apparently and we are too. We are too, apparently. <laughs> All you have to do is go to one of the meetings and you're automatically yeah. a member. A uh, great club if you've not ever had a chance to go, if you're in that area. Yeah. We've got some fantastic meetings. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, so anyway, uh, those two, they're here for the winter. They just decided, who knows why, that they wanted to come up here and spend a winter in Alaska, so they did. And um, and Heath, who, uh, is he from, he's, he's also from that area. built his boat in Port Townsend. Yeah, he built yep. his boat in Port Townsend. He's got an unusual boat with a square sail. And, and standing headroom. And standing headroom <laughs> in a 30 foot, it's less than 30 feet, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Heath had his boat directly across from ours, so we had to ask him to kind of cock it off to one side. <laughs> because, well, the mast sticks out 20 feet in front, of the, uh, in front of the pulpit when it's laying down like that, getting yeah. ready to lift it back up. And it's 20 feet out there, and it goes all the way across the dock. And all the way out into the next finger, so we, you know, we kind of I cocked our boat a little bit that way, and he cocked his boat a little bit that way, and so there was enough room for the mast to go down. And to walk around, which was pretty. And nice. to walk around, there were a couple of dogs that got confused, but um, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really good, honey. Haven't had this for a while. We haven't been able to. Easy. Just gets settled down. Yeah, you talk for a while. Huh? Mm. What do you mean no? <laughs> Excuse us for a minute. <laughs> so next is winterizing the boat, which is just a matter of putting a tarp on it. Well, since we never had summer, winterizing isn't really <laughs> that much of a deal. There's no. Um, there's no water in the tank, there's no fuel, the fuel tank's not in. The, the next priority after getting it, uh, um, the Dodger up and tarp so that the snow can't get in, then I have to get down in there and do the electrical system so that uh, the onboard battery charger can keep the batteries mm -hmm. up. Yeah, we want those charged through the winter. Yeah, it's $900 worth of batteries in there. <laughs> Brand new. <laughs> Don't want to lose them, yeah. yeah. So what else? We're going to be working on the website in the next few months. That's mainly you working on the website. You are the graphic designer of the, <laughs> of the team. But I've got some writing to do too. I have some ideas. And of course the videos. Oh my god. That next video of the um, part four of the uh, uh, remix video. Mm -hmm. The remaster video, remix remaster video. It's uh, the red shirt monologues. <laughs> what are you going to do with those, I've been Chuck? trying to figure out how to make that look good. I could have put a, put a positive spin on that. <laughs> the red shirt monologues. If you've I never know. seen the red shirt monologues. Don't bother. <laughs> They're hysterical, Chuck. They are not. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> It's really hard. <laughs> yeah, but you share your heart and your soul, and, and 
I mean, you're just honest about the trip. And um, <laughs> there's some deadpan moments in there that are just absolutely hysterical. So Really? Yeah, you're laughing I, at me? Uh, of course I am. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so silly. <laughs> Anyway, if I you can barely had a stand chance, to watch it, let alone know, edit them. I know, but it's been years since you've seen it. <laughs> anyway, if you've not seen the red shirt monologue, you, should you may never, <laughs> because I'm thinking of just taking them. No, you will not. All right. You will not do that. <laughs> and what else have we got going? Besides just more sanding and painting and varnishing. Yeah. Um. Well, electrical box, I haven't really thought much beyond that. Uh, fuel tank, electrical box. And then back to the furniture, we have that, the settee to put in, and oh, and the, stri the ceiling strips. Um, I haven't got those Four screwed them, in yet. Yeah. I did screw those in and, um, and then take them back out again and do the ceiling and varnishing. But uh, the workshop is uh, unavailable to us right now. So I guess what we could do it here at, in the mm -hmm. garage like we did last year. Yeah, of course. There's plenty of room in there. Uh, for just for uh, sealing and varnishing, we can certainly do that here because we did all that last year. Mm -hmm. So, And we can heat this better than we can heat the other place. Yeah. So we just keep plugging away at it. We'll get it done. Uh, the other side, the furniture on the port side, the dinette, um, I'm still... I have to turn that sapelli rough, that rough sapelli lumber into uh, finished dimensional boards. Mm. And you've said yourself many times it's it's really no more than just high school shop work. Well, except for except for turning the rough lumber into the lumber of the dimension, finished lumber of the you know plain and smooth and of the proper dimensions that I need. That part of it, I don't. It's, you know, it's the in between part. That part. Once I have the dimensional lumber in my hands, I can cut it to the, to the sizes I need mm -hmm. and fit it, you know, measure, mark, cut, and fasten the basic stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like, I'm not like Mike or, or, or Andy, you can, you know, go out into the woods with an axe and <laughs> turn a tree Chalk into furniture. Tree. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly what they're doing, you know, yeah. Andy and Michael, they yeah. are turning uh, yellow cedar into a house, mm -hmm. yellow cedar trees into a house. And it's the reason he's got all those, uh, all that, those yellow, yellow cedar uh, boards, planks, uh, rough planks, drying in the workshop. Yeah, they're going to be pretty busy come spring. Anything else? No, there's always something else, but. Anything else right now? Mm, nope. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.